So I'm gonna take a look here at a forehand drop shot. So I was teaching this earlier today and, and here's a bit of a, a split screen between myself on the right and one of my students on the left. So this is the same exact point. So the ball's bouncing, so I'm gonna use it from this position there. So the first thing to notice is as the ball's bouncing, let's take a look at my presentation compared to my student's presentation. As you'll notice, my racket face is looking a lot more open and a lot more towards the camera, whereas his racket face, it's a little bit closed and it's starting to look a little bit more towards that side wall. So for me, that's, that's a little bit of a, a position that I wanted to address. But here's where the main difference starts to lie is the shape of our, our swings at this point. As I'm approaching the ball, watch what happens to my racket head and look how it comes towards the camera and drops downwards. So just take a look at the right hand screen first. And as you can see at that point there, the top part of my racket there is looking directly back at the camera. And I've got this nice bit of bend in my forearm, decent bit of spacing between myself and the ball. And you'll notice that that racket's coming in a lot more open and a lot more horizontal in towards that ball. So let me take it back a few frames and we'll have a look at my student swing on the left here. What you'll notice is quite a severe drop towards that ball. So let's have a look at the left and you can just see the big differences there. So I'll let it run and if you can see both screens, this makes quite a difference there. So because of that directness to the ball, there's you know there's not much feathering my my student the, the guy hitting it on the left is not going to be able to really feather the ball in it's a little bit stiff and a little bit blocked in a way okay so let me try get it where the ball's just coming off the strings for both of us so at about that point there let me put that together so now look at the difference here let's look at the contact points so as I'm making my shot there, notice my, my angle of my racket compared to my student's racket mine's a lot more horizontal his is pointing a little bit more towards the ground also, just take a notice at our body positions and the slight difference between these two. I think that's quite striking as well. I'm able to get a lot lower, get down into the shot. Whereas if you look at the angle of my student's legs on the left, they're a little bit more upright. You'll also notice that there's maybe like a slight rounding and a slight hunching in the back. I've, I've got a slight one as well, but I think for me, it's more about engaging the hips. My hips seem to be lower, whereas obviously on my student, those hips don't seem to be as low as that position. Okay, so let me just move this. So have a look at on the right here. Look at, 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 as I play the ball, look how it comes across my strings. The ball travels with that open face and I can feather that ball in. And we'll just finalize with this final position here. Have a little look at my back foot. Look how everything compacts, it all slides in, it's all connected. Whereas on the left with my student there, there's a little bit of a locking of the back foot. It locks a little bit, so it doesn't help transfer the body weight into the shot. It's all a little bit blocked, all a little bit stabby from this side. Whereas I think from my side on the right, it's a bit more feathered, it's a bit more caressed because of how I'm able to drop the racket back, because of how I'm able to give it enough space and I'm able to reach for the ball. One more thing I just wanna point out here, again, a very, very big common fault in amateurs. Look at that bend in the arm of the contact point as opposed to the almost straight arm on my position there. You definitely wanna to start to feel that arm is locking out at the contact point. Because when it starts to lock out, you've got a lot more control, there's a lot more variability what's gonna happen in the racket head. Whereas when there's a little bit of a bend in the arm, it gets a little bit more inconsistent. And then we'll just have a look at the finishing position now. So if you notice on the left-hand screen, watch how my students having to slightly manipulate the ball, slightly having to throw the racket, you know, like, in and around and having to try to do a lot of work with that racket head to try get it towards where it should be going. It's not a bad shot, you know, it hits a few inches above the tin, so it's not bad at all. But there's definitely something about the inconsistencies of the racket head, as opposed to if we just have a little look at this position here, as I make contact, look at how it goes slightly across, but then it points towards my target. I'm a massive fan of, of having that racket head and the top of the racket in particular, pointing towards that target area. There feels like more of a naturalness when I'm able to drop the racket head back, keep it nice and open. Again, that's probably the biggest snapshot difference between the two of us. And that for me makes a huge difference in regard to cutting the ball in, but not only cutting it in, in regard to feathering and feeling the ball into that target area to make it more consistent. Like I said, just to repeat something, just have a look at the feet, look at how the body weight transfer from the right compared to the left is a lot more in sync. And actually, as I'm talking here, I'm just noticing one more thing. Let's have a look at the angle of his left foot compared to mine. My student's left foot is slightly opening up and there's a little bit of a compensation. 
Whereas on my one, there's a bit more of a natural step and it's all connected and aligned. As you can see on the left, there's just that little bit of opening. And as soon as I see that, it just feels like there's, there's some yeah, compensating happening in that position. Whereas on the right, it's a little bit more connected. And the nice thing about this final position, obviously I'm balanced and stable. My student is relatively balanced and stable. But the big thing, my recoil can be really decent. I can really push out from that position really well.